In this week's video I will talk about different ways on how to learn radiology. Now I'm going to present you a list with my personal top 10 here on how to learn radiology. Keep in mind, and I say this already here, that these different steps or these different strategies vary depending on the stage of your career. So a resident has different needs as a fellow or as a consultant. Back in 2013, um, I passed the final board exam in radiology in Switzerland, summa cum laude, and was awarded the prize for the best exam in that year. So I know a little bit about learning. Now, before we move on, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also give me a like and make sure you also click on this bell notification Just button because then you get an email every time I upload a new video. Number 10, TikTok. Seriously, don't use TikTok for learning. I have a TikTok account or I had one um, and it was on my phone for maybe two weeks. I uploaded like two videos on, I think it was Spine. Uh, seriously, I don't even know how to look for something on TikTok. They we just, just show randomly, but maybe I'm just too old and don't want to spend um, too much time on that platform. But if you know how to use uh, TikTok effectively for learning, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to see what you got there. Number nine, social media feeds. Now, Many of us scroll through LinkedIn or Twitter on a daily basis and you see many, many cases where radiologists post their very interesting cases, um, many of them very educational. If you just look at the images, they even provide the history, the findings, maybe even the follow-up and surgical proof of, of the pathology, give a little summary of the pathology or disease. So really nice if you think that way. But a few days ago, I asked myself, what do I remember from seeing on LinkedIn or Twitter from the day before? And even if I'm asking myself today, what did I see yesterday on LinkedIn or um, Twitter? Um, probably some COVID case, uh, but other than that, I can't remember. And I think it has to do with the attention span, which is way too short on these kind of social media platforms, at least for me, um, when you're just scrolling through. I can't remember this stuff, I don't know why. Number eight, night shifts. I put this in here only because on Twitter one guy re uh, answered my uh, Twitter uh, tweet that uh, he uses or best way for him or most efficient way is night shifts because diamonds are formed under pressure, which is kind of a nice saying. And actually I think it, partially it's true because if you're alone for the first time as a resident and you really need to make the call, it really puts pressure on you to be accurate and try to deliver. I think it's a little bit helpful but it's not systematic. You don't really have a lot of like, um, yeah, there's not a systematic approach on, on this kind of learning. And I think it's, you're learning something different from actual facts. You're learning how to deliver, how to make calls, how to deal with uh, uncertainty, which is a great part in radiology. So it's probably more important for residents to be prepared for this uh, with, from a knowledge basis. But once you're there, you're forming or learning a different skill set as a radiologist, not really the knowledge that you use to make these calls. Number seven, original research. So original research is very depending on your uh, stage of your career. As a consultant, you will use original research probably way more for learning than for example, as a resident. As a resident, you have such so much to learn that you're not really trying to read uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes for one particular paper that is just dealing maybe with one anatomic structure uh, and the result might not even be clear, you'd rather have a look at the book or as a, at a uh, review article. So I think original research has some value, but it's not efficient. So you have to read materials and methods, which is kind of boring. And yeah, it's not efficient use of time. But there's one way how you can speed things up. Basically, you read the abstract, you scroll through the images, and maybe if you want, you can read uh, the discussion or the conclusion of the paper. I think with that, you get a, quite a quick summary of what actually was the message of the paper. What research is actually very good for is if you do research yourself and really you write the paper, you will learn a lot because you have to go into the literature. You do basically a little review for yourself and put everything down into one paper. So it's a very efficient way to learn because you're just spending so much time with this topic then. Number six, books. Plain simple books are still of great value in radiology, especially at the beginning of a career or if you want to deep dive into a new topic. Because book, books have a very structured approach to a topic, uh, very systematic, 
And if it's a good book and it's not just blah blah, then I think you can learn quite a lot out of it. Now, it might not be the most efficient way once you passed a different uh, uh, step or in your career because most of the stuff you're going to read you know already. So that's one of the downsides here. Number five. Google or the internet in general? I think the internet and Google is a great way to learn radiology on a daily basis. And I want to mention Radiopedia here, uh, which is the best library or online source for radiology ever. Um, it's really great. If you can support it, it's just a very great thing for us. It's, it's, it's free. I mean, it's, what else can I say? Anyways. But I also like Google because if you have a specific question, maybe an anatomic structure you're not sure about, just try to put something into Google and see what the images bring out. Or maybe you get um, the first 10 like headlines, etc., or results. There might be some articles or like headlines that are really putting you into the right direction. So I think it, it's really great um, to, to deal with like, unknown stuff as a first step before you go maybe to PubMed, etc. I think. Uh, Google. I'm a big Google fan and I use this daily and I might do a video about how I actually use or what, how my search pattern is because I think there is a very specific way on how you can search unknown findings uh, or unknown disease in that way so, that, so you come to a conclusion pretty quickly. Number four, review articles. Review articles are great because typically they are not outdated as books are most often. Um, are certainly peer-reviewed and therefore maybe less uh, prone to mistakes compared to some books. And you can have a review over a topic as a very broad, uh, from a very broad view, but you can also have reviews on a topic on a very like narrow topic, which is kind of great. Um, you can just jump through what you want. You have a lot of good images, which is probably one of the, the best advantages of reviews. Um, so I like it a lot. Um, you know the obvious ones, radiographics, but even all the other uh, online journals or radiology journals have very good uh, review articles that from time to time are just necessary to keep uh, on track with the knowledge. Number three, conferences. Conferences are great, uh, not just because you go out and meet other people, unless it's 2020 where everybody sits in ho uh, at home in front of a computer. But typically, if you decide to go to Chicago for RSNA, um, you're committing quite a lot of resources there to go there. and you really want to make sure you get a lot out of it. And your mindset is already there. You want to learn, right? So it's, it's the same if you attend a workshop or any other form of life, life meeting. You're there, you're really open, your mind is open. And if it's a good conference with good speakers, they really manage to convey a message during their presentation. And if you just manage to keep three facts from a lecture and you do this over the course of a few, uh, maybe a few days, then it's just a great, great resource. In addition to all the other benefits you get there, like from all the socializing and networking, etc. So I, I'm a big fan of, of conferences actually. And of course, it's even better if you can give a, a, a lecture yourself, because if you really have to prepare and deliver in front of a lot of people, you really have to make sure you know what you're talking about. And this forces you to go back into the literature, have a quick uh, look again, make sure you don't make any mistakes. So that's another benefit there. Number three, fellowships. Fellowships are probably one of the best ways on how to learn radiology because you're spending one year in one particular area or body, like for, for example, neuroradiology or MSK. And during 12 months, you can learn quite a lot. Uh, obviously you need to use all the other resources that I already mentioned, but you have time to spend time in a particular topic and you get experience. And the experience is what really is the benefit of a fellowship. You see a lot of cases in that particular field. And if you go back to a general practice or a smaller hospital, you can really draw from your experience because other um, radiologists without that kind of background, they need a lot more time until they get to this kind of level. If they don't see a lot of, for example, I don't know, post-operative knees or, or maybe elbow MRI, for example. So if you can do a fellowship, um, there are some reasons maybe why you shouldn't do a fellowship. I remember a, a, a thread in a forum where a guy asked the peers there, uh, whether he should do actually a fellowship or just go to private practice right away because he obviously had a job offer and they seem to be paying quite a lot. And he was afraid that if he goes to fellowship, he might lose this opportunity and then uh, lose a lot of money. So I'm not sure whether that's actually the right way to think, but that's maybe something for another topic. Number one, 
So the best way to learn radiology from uh, my personal experience is actually one-on-one -on -one teaching. And this goes through all steps of your career. So as a resident, you're actually uh, relying on somebody teaching you stuff. Uh, you cannot just learn everything from books. It's not possible and also not very efficient. You have to work, right? Uh, same as, as a fellow, if you can discuss your cases with your professor or a consultant, it's really great. You learn a lot. You can draw from their experience. You can ask questions immediately if you have or don't understand a particular topic or message, which you cannot really do with books or videos or any other form of uh, teaching. So one-on-one -on -one is really great. Um, make sure you continue to do that even on a consultant level, not just uh, reading books. Really make sure you get into discussions with colleagues on on different findings and I think it's uh, especially on the consultant level probably underrated at some point people think they know everything and just do their own thing and they don't really get this kind of feedback loop or reflection from others and it's kind of dangerous because uh, self-satisfaction is never a good thing in this uh, regard I guess. So that was my personal top 10 list on how to learn radiology. If you have a different approach, if you think I underrated something or maybe overrated something else or even forgot something, then please comment below. I'm really curious on how to see uh, how you handle this kind of thing. And if you really have a strong opinion on TikTok, uh, please let me know. I, I have no clue there. Make also sure you check out my Black Friday sale. I have 50% off of my MRI wrist masterclass and also the Patreon collection where I offer my Patreon exclusive videos for a small amount over at this. It is on the same homepage basically. And if you don't know where to go and find my stuff, make sure you check out my uh, homepage, which is just msk.acton.org, where you find everything I put together in one place. So I think it's a great way to start, or if you want to uh, share my uh, video or content with other people, um, for example. Now, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and happy learning and stay safe.